Japan in 2023 had a, one of the oldest squads at the World Cup, so we need to regenerate the squad. So selection of the players to keep and, and the young players coming through is going to be crucial. Um, and I think the second thing is, you know, the game's gone towards, it's a big, big man power game. You know, how can we create a, a, a game where we can play quickly, use the resources of Japan mm -hmm. to be effective against the top eight countries in the world? It's understanding for us to progress from where we are. And Japan's done really well. You know, if you look at what they've done since 2015 to now, you know, they've moved into the top tier, but we haven't been able to beat the top countries. You know, the last eight years, Japan's got a 7% winning record against the top eight countries. Mm -hmm. So we need to change. Um, so the players, I think, will... All, all warm to a change mm -hmm. um, and then we've, we've just got to make sure we identify what are the priority areas to get right to, to play differently. Well I think over the next four years yes we will, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. We need to bring younger players through, we need to play, we need to play a more Japanese style of rugby um, but still be able to compete with the power of South Africa or England or France. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple of things there um, and there's always a number of factors but I think it's again finding one finding an effective way of playing um, because if we keep playing like we've been playing we'll keep getting the same results you know the definition mm -hmm. of, of uh, lunacy is, is keep doing what you're doing but expect different results and and the second thing is I think whenever you've fought so hard, as Japan has, to reach a certain level, there's a little bit of after that. Mm. You know, it's natu it's, that's human nature. You know. Only the top one or two percent of people just relentlessly keep going, chasing things. And we need to get that, that hunger back to chase again, mm -hmm. like to really chase hard, to break into the top eight now. So it is a mindset, it's a thinking. I think, you know, when we first started in 2015, players were just happy to represent Japan. Mm. And now they want to win for Japan. Mm. They really want to win. Um, but we need to elevate that to a, almost like an obsession to, to be the best in the world mm -hmm. and not be happy to be the best in Japan. Mm. Like, you know, to me, the best example is Otani. Yeah, you know, now young kids in Japan don't aspire to play for the Giants. Or they might want to play for the Giants or the Handshift Tigers. But now they know they can play for the Dodgers or they can play for uh, Oakland A's or they can play for the Red Sox. Because that's, a, that's possible to them. Like, at the moment with Japan, yeah, or we can compete against the big countries. Yeah, and as you said, we're knocking on the door and maybe there's a, there's a bit at the back of the head that says that's enough. And we've got to change that to saying that's not enough. So what are you got to do to, what have we got to, what have we got to do and what are you got to do to change that thinking? So it's about, right, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to attack this with even more ferocity.